Hi everyone. Yeah, I'm really following on actually from um, what Carol just said and also using her box so that you can see me. <laughs> um, how do I? Yeah, so say really following on from what Carol's saying and indeed what Willie was saying earlier, there's been an increase in focus recently, really over the last decade, on how micro and macro algae can be used as sustainable feedstocks for biofuels, for bioenergy, chemicals, and indeed ingredients and things like cosmetics and nutraceuticals. And in fact, the algal biofuel industry alone is forecast to hit $1.6 billion by 2015. And uh, the algae bioproducts, so bioproducts are already a multi-million dollar industry. But as these strains of microalgae and macroalgae are developed, it's really important that we ensure that they're done so in a sustainable way, not only economically sustainable, but ensure their environmental and social sustainability as well. So really in response to that requirement and to ensure that UK businesses can um, realise the potential for new bio-inspired innovation from algae, the Algo Bioenergy Special Interest Group was formed, acronyms the ABSIG, I'm sure like the rest of you there's a whole world of acronyms here, but um, so we're the ABSIG, we're basically a two year joint network of the Technology Strategy Board, TSB, and the Natural Environmental Research Council. We sit within the Biosciences um, Knowledge Transfer Network and we work closely with other knowledge transfer networks such as environmental sustainability and energy generation and supply. The ABSIG um, is run, I'm the Knowledge Exchange Fellow for the group, um, the director, I'm sure some of you will know, Dr Michelle Stanley from the Scottish Association for Marine Science, um, where I'm also based, and we also work with Dr Tom Jenkins in the Biosciences KTN. The ABSIG is basically a networking group and we aim to increase the number of industry academic collaboration to push forward the commercialisation um, of algal technologies and algal innovation. But critically to ensure that as algae and algal products and services are commercialised that they're done so in a sustainable fashion and to ensure that ecosystem services thinking is embedded within commercialisation projects. As many of you will know, there's been, and as Carol just mentioned, there's been a lot of hype in the last kind of decade or so surrounding the use of algae, particularly microalgae, um, as a source of biofuel, as a sustainable feedstock for biofuel. And I'm sure a lot of you in this room will recognise numbers uh, such as these, if, if you can see them, that is, <laughs> um, which show the potential high oil productivity of some species of microalgae relative to more traditional terrestrial um, oil-based crops. But despite that high oil productivity, we're still some way from seeing commercial algal-based biofuels being produced at a commercial scale. And the reason for that is, as ever, down to cost, the cost of culturing algae, the cost associated with the harvesting and dewatering technologies. And as a result, there's now been a shift, not away from algae for biofuel, but more as a stepping stone towards algae for biofuel, looking at algae for chemicals, as Carol just mentioned, and for other products in order to underpin the economic viability of the longer term goal of algae for biofuels. So it's a bit ironic then that I'm from the Algal Bioenergy Special Interest Group. I think we should probably change our name to Algal Biotechnology to um, really encompass the whole range of applica potential applications of algae. And really, the ABSIG, um, the ABSIG recognises and operates in four key market sectors, four key broad um, market sectors. Um, Firstly, at the culturing stage, we work with a lot of businesses, particularly water companies, on the potential for algae for waste management. Using wastewater streams, which would otherwise be a cost to companies um, to grow algae within them so that the algae cleans up the water, and then you're producing a valuable biomass. So for these companies, converting waste into something with value, into a biomass. So wastewater is, is really the main one that we're focusing on just now, but also using waste CO2 streams. Um, and I understand PML have a great project with Boots where CO2 is from their factories used to grow microalgae. 
but also with other um, similar industries such as anaerobic digestion. We're talking with a few companies just now on using the liquid digestate, which is waste for the AD industry and a costly waste. How can that liquid di digestate be used to grow up microalgae on to produce a biomass? The value to these companies changes depend of the biomass changes depending on what they're looking for. A lot of companies, um, we look at using the algae just to feed straight back into anaerobic digestion um, to use the biomass for methane gas. But more often, we're looking at different value-added products from that biomass. And Carol mentioned quite a lot of these, as did Willie. And um, really, these come in two different sectors. You could look at them as low-value but high-volume products such as your animal feeds, um, fertilisers, these are particularly um, for macroalgae, as well as aquaculture feeds from microalgae. At the other end, um, and kind of what Carol touched on, we're looking at the higher value but lower volume, really niche products that can be extracted from algae. Um, chemicals and enzymes which can be put in as ingredients to cosmetics, um, pharmaceutical products, nutraceutical products, and indeed for human food. And really, these three uh, broad sectors will be eventually used to underpin um, the bioenergy and the biofuel potential of algae and allow us to realise the potential there um, with, the f with biofuel and bioenergy to ultimately steer away from the oil-based economy that we're in. So really, in order for the the algal industry to get off the ground, and I'm sure a lot of you will have heard this phrase, an integrated biorefinery approach. We're starting to get there with terrestrial crops, but that's ultimately where the algal industry will be in order to realise the potential for algal biofuels. And just to give you an idea of the value of the non-energy um, side of algae, again, this kind of touches on what Carol spoke around about earlier. This table shows some of the existing markets for marine bioproducts, and as you can see, they're quite significant. Um, things like hydrocolloids from macroalgae are worth an estimated $2 billion. Likewise, carotenoids and things like beta-carotene um, from microalgae are estimated at $1 billion for use in the nutraceutical sector. And as you can see, the, the list is quite extensive, all with significant value. Moving away from the kind of lower volume but really high value products, algae is also beginning to get developed for other um, more commodity based but non-energy products such as bioplastics like Carol um, touched on earlier. Bioplastic market at the moment is worth an estimated $1 billion but that's forecast to grow to capture 10 to 20 percent of the overall plastics market by 2020 with an estimated worth of $10 billion, which is quite significant. So if algae potentially could play a pivotal role in this market, which at the moment is really dependent on crude oil, and algae could allow that shift away from the crude oil dependence. So how can we take advantage of these opportunities from algae, and how can we allow UK businesses and indeed Euro wider European businesses to realise the potential and really take hold of what could be a real opportunity for growth, which is the buzzword uh, today. Um, well, Carol and certainly the speakers this morning touched on this aspect of multidisciplinary and I think that's absolutely key. At an academic level, it's going to involve the collaboration of marine scientists, biologists, engineers, to name just a few of the disciplines that will probably be involved. But critically, there's a pivotal role here for the, um, the interaction of universities, of research institutes with businesses. And that's where the ABSEG uh, really fits in in providing that bridge to get the knowledge out of universities, out of research institutes and into businesses who can make it happen. And in doing that, talking through not only the, um, the opportunities for bio-inspired innovation, but how to develop them in a sustainable way. We're co-funded by um, NERC, and their vision is to advance knowledge and understanding of the earth and its environments to help secure a sustainable future for the planet and its people. 
Well, with that in mind, before we look at the commercialisation aspects with businesses, we talk to them about the sustainability aspects. And we've developed sustainability framework <clears throat> for algal biotechnology within the UK. And one of the key anticipated outcomes of this was to develop an evidence base um, to allow the research base to develop um, information to inform the key decisions which will be pivotal um, in developing this industry. So questions like what are the best algal feedstocks for the UK, what is the most appropriate locations for the production of micro and macro algae and what are the environmental implications of them and can we develop a predictive modelling system where if somebody says I want to scale up production here, what are the potential implications so we know them before it happens? They are the key decisions that industry will need to know before they take this market to commercialisation. And this framework, um, if anybody want any more information on it, is outlined in our strategic research agenda. This was commissioned by the ABSEG last year and was published at the beginning of this year. And really, what the SRA does is outline the ecosystem services research requirements to support the growth of the algal bioenergy and biotech industry um, with focus in the UK and uh, the rest of Europe. So that report is available on our website, which um, I'll give you a link of, or if you're interested, you can come and speak to me then. I'll be more than happy to email you over a copy of that. So moving away from the SRA, how, how do we get that information? We've got this report, we've got the info, we know algae can be developed um, to, for a whole range of product, products that we've already heard about. How do we get that to businesses that can do something with it? Well, the ABSEG has a knowledge exchange program <coughs> which is up and running. At the most basic level, we have an online forum at Underscore Connect. This is through our partners at the TSB. And on that forum, we disseminate information, all the latest um, algae-related events, news, uh, funding calls, and reports are all put on that website, and not just from ABSEG but from, and from NERC, from other um, research councils as well from BBSRC, EPSRC. Duncan kind of touched on it earlier, this need for cross uh, research council work and, and I think this is probably one of the main areas that that falls in. Algae really falls between all the research councils. So it's not just NERC information that would be put up there, it's all uh, research councils and any news happening across the whole community. As well as that, the forum offers a chance for members, it's free to join by the way, um, offers members the chance to blog and interact with each other to start building new research partnerships and new collaboration. Also, well moving on from that in a more kind of complex way, we're going out and actively engaging with businesses. So we've identified the four broad sector areas that we're working in. And within that, we're going out and meeting businesses and talking to them about the potential of algae and how it could be used in their business to widen their business portfolio, increase their innovation, and ultimately to increase the sustainability. In doing that, we're then connecting those businesses that are interested with the academic research base, putting them in direct contact with the people who can, who can help them make it happen. And our goal is really to increase the number of industry-led industry um, algae research projects going forward. And within each of these projects, um, again, ensuring that ecosystem services is underpinned in each of those projects to ensure that it's a major part going forward. To, that's a kind of one-to-one -one level of businesses. We also organise a whole series of workshops to help bring the community together. And um, an example of this, moving away from the, well, to bring the SRA to the forefront of people's minds, we organised this June, um, our first of our commercialisation workshops. So opportunities for algal commercialisation, which took place in Cranfield in June of this year. Um, the workshop really offered a platform to open up the discussion about the opportunities and challenges surrounding algal commercialisation and to bring the strategic research agenda into that equation. 
The workshop was really successful. We had over 100 delegates there, 40% of which represented industry and 17% representing government officials. So it shows there is a real appetite for algal technologies within the UK. Moving on from that, um, in a few weeks' time, uh, the second of our commercialisation workshops um, with our partners in Norway, um, workshop called Seaweed for Biofuels, um, Opportunities in the Way Forward. So again, it's called biofuels, but we also have speakers there from FMC biopolymers and bioplastics as well. So really looking at the whole um, concept of this, of this integrated biorefinery. And um, that's with our partners at Innovate Norway. So we're beginning to increase the UK um, international collaboration, particularly with Norway, given our position um, and with the oil and gas sector as well. It's a nice follow on. Indeed, we've got um, several big of the oil and gas companies attending and speaking at that event, showing there is the appetite there for these technologies. Finally, um, after Following on from these events, we're developing a UK algal biotechnology roadmap. This, this roadmap aims to define the likely timeframes and actions required to establish um, a really competitive algae sector within the UK. In re we recognise that during this road mapping procedure, stakeholder consultation is absolutely critical. Um, so we're holding two workshops. These are identical workshops, um, one at the end of October in Manchester and the other the following week in London. And the reason we're holding two is we want a really broad um, base to have input from uh, academics, industry representatives and government representatives. But critically, we're splitting it over two, firstly to make sure that people can attend one or the other, but also to make sure that numbers are small enough to have a really focused discussion around the key questions and challenges of commercialising algal products and technologies. This roadmap will be run in collaboration with the Institute of Manufacturing and we hope they'll facilitate both workshops and we hope that the final report will be published at the end of March 2013. There'll be a launch event which of course will be advertised on our Connect forum and the report will be made available on that forum eh, once it's published. If anybody here is interested in taking part in that road mapping activity, please come and find me um, at the break or at lunch and I can talk you through how you can become involved. Indeed, well, we don't do questions now, but um, if anybody else wants to chat anything through, please just come and find me. I'll be here for the rest of the day.